Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very big pleasure for me to be here. Thank you for your interest in the Court of Justice of the European Union. I think that this yearly tradition, according to which President Jaeger of the General Court and I myself, the Court of Justice, present together the work of our common institution is a very important moment to exchange. But in fact, in this event, you are center stage. It should be the occasion for you to ask everything which you would ever have liked to ask us. It's in that spirit that I'm here. Now, the overall number of cases has still gone up in the year 2017. We have had last year 1,656 cases against 1,604 cases. So about 50 cases more for the two courts together. For the Court of Justice, the upper court, it meant 739 cases compared to 713 the year before. Now, the increase is very largely due to an increase in references for preliminary rulings. And you know what it is. It's all these questions in all subject matters of European Union law, ranging from internal market, competition, state aid, taxation, the environment, anything you can think of on which the European Union has rules, consumer protection, and so on and so forth. In all these cases, national courts come across union law as a source of rules in the subject matter before them. These rules are common to the uh, member states of the European Union, and in order to guarantee a uniform interpretation, application, and enforcement of these rules, uniformity, which is the ultimate guarantee of equality between member states and their peoples before union law, national courts refer questions to the Court of Justice of the European Union. And effectively, uh, last year, we had 533 cases of that sort which is a 30% increase vis-à-vis -vis 2016, the year before. Now, in the first months of 2018, not covered, of course, by the report, that same trend has, I would almost say, in a spectacular way, continued. We have, the last Monday, 16th of April, 266 new cases in the Court of Justice compared to 205. So it's an increase of 60 cases compared to the first three months of 2017. And of these 266 cases, again, 174 are references for preliminary rulings stemming from national courts of all our member states, east, west, north, south, in all the subject matters covered by European Union law. If that continues in this way, we will not end up with 750 cases, roughly speaking, like last year, but we will go over 900 cases. It is an enormous uh, increase, quantitatively, but also qualitatively because the cases come in the most sensitive subject areas, what political scientists would call in high politics subject matters, such as asylum and immigration, but also privacy versus security. Um, other examples, of course, um, consumer protection cases, many um, procedural matters, they all come up through this mechanism. Now, the Court of Justice has um, committed quite a bit of energy last year 
in organizing the so-called judicial network of the European Union. And now I'm going to slightly frustrate you because the judicial network of the European Union is at this stage still a close network linking the 71 supreme and constitutional courts of all 28 member states to the Court of Justice of the European Union. It is an interactive network, interactive platform, excuse me, on the internet with closed access for uploading documents by all 71 participating supreme and constitutional courts of the member states and the Court of Justice. You should know that when a reference for a preliminary ruling comes in, the first thing the Court of Justice does as an institution is translate it into the 24 languages of the European Union. Then the reference is notified to all the member states which have the right to make observations in their own language. The reason of that being that the judgment which will be the outcome of that procedure will be equally binding in all 28 member states and not just in the member state from where the question came. That's the reason. But that also means that we are in fact sitting on a treasure. We have all these national judgments involving matters of European Union law in all 24 languages. And up till 2017, we didn't do anything with it. But we had to gain the confidence of our national partners in this exchange preliminary reference procedure. Because the national courts have very divergent systems of personal data protection for the parties and the people involved in these cases. Publication policies. So they said, we sent the case to you, but that does not mean that you can put it sort of in the open, a fortiori not in the internet, when it is completely open. So we are now saying to them, we have a common interest to work in transparency. So we are now putting into effect probably during two years in a fully closed way, this common platform. The uploading of documents, that is national decisions and court of justice decisions in all these languages, will be a closed network. It is clear that my ambition is to make it open as quickly as possible that we have won over all the problems of personal data protection of sensitivities which are there. So we're working on this. It's extremely important because European Union law is not a special branch of the law. It is a source of law full of rules which are relevant in all subject matters of national law, tax law, employment law, environmental law, energy law, civil law, private international law, procedural law, criminal law, family law, inheritance law. In all these fields, there are EU law rules and also judgments of our court. The network consolidates this and brings the Court of Justice as the court which has the monopoly of answering preliminary ruling, uh, references, that is, preliminary questions. It's to be seen as sort of in the center of the web of national courts national courts which are equal to the Court of Justice, working together to make the common law of Europe work. The average duration is still about 15 months. It was 15.7 for a preliminary reference. That is average. Many are decided within a year. If it's an urgent preliminary procedure in a case, normally criminal law cases where a person is detained, then we hand down the ruling within three months. But that comes to a cost because then the written stage of procedure is not generally open for all the member states, but only for the member state whose court it was to refer the matter to us in the first place. Substance-wise, it was a year full of 
crucially important cases. I just name a few because you know all of them since you're following our case law and my list is far from being exhaustive. We had to rule on request of the European Parliament on the EU-Canada PNR agreement and the question to know whether it was uh, compatible or not with passengers, air passengers' privacy and personal data protection rights. And we said that in the fine print of the draft agreement as it was now presented, it was not compatible, but we indicated what needed to be adapted to make it compatible, and that is now in the process of being done. Very well known is, of course, the new generation trade and investment agreement with Singapore, but which is in fact the precursor to CETA and to TTIP as types of agreements in terms of the division of competence between the European Union on the one hand and the member states on the other in the conclusion of such agreements with these mentioned third states. And that, of course, stands model for many further negotiations with Japan, Vietnam, Australia, etc., etc. As you may recall, we uh, decided there that the exclusive uh, competence of the Union uh, in the field of the common commercial policy, or if you prefer the term, the international trade policy of the European Union, extends to all aspects of the trade part of these agreements, including those matters involving intellectual property rights or a sustainable development provisions, etc., etc. The only thing which is not covered is investment other than direct investment, commonly also named portfolio investments. And then the famous investor-to-state dispute settlement system, the famous ISDS, and as you know, we have now uh, a request from the Kingdom of Belgium to rule on the substantive compliance or not of the uh, CETA ISDS system uh, with the fundamentals of the European Union constitutional uh, system. Other very well known cases have involved the Islamic headscarf in the workplace, whether that was or not discrimination, and if so, direct or indirect. Um, we have had rulings on the Uber system the, of the sharing economy, uh, the platform economy, internet platform economy, um, and of course, um, many other uh, cases in the field. I already mentioned the cases involving the conflict between privacy and security. Um, the list is endless. Uh, but I think I leave that better for the substantive, uh, for the substantive um, discussion with you. So to conclude, there is um, a still increasing quantitative pressure on the Court of Justice, especially through the mechanism for preliminary rulings, which is a sort of exclusive dialogue uh, channel between national courts, all the national courts, but especially the Supreme and the Constitutional Courts, and our court. The interactive internet platform, which is now being launched, is in fact an informal way to enhance and fluidify this formal dialogue mechanism. And that is essential to make European Union law, as the common law of Europe, work in all the fields where member states through the treaties, have conferred competences on the European Union. So it is an increase quantitatively and qualitatively, because the range of topics we deal with is ever increasing, is ever broader and broader. And not only in technical matters, think about value-added tax, that's a technical matter, important, but no one will leave her or his sleep for it, but also in very, very sensitive matters. Think about religion in the workplace, just to name that as an example, among many others possible. So it's a court which is quantitatively and qualitatively still at the edge of developments of the European Union, of the societies within the European Union, the national societies, and we do that in interaction between equals with the Supreme and the Constitutional Courts of the Member States. Thank you.